from the London Original Print Fair. We are thrilled to be making our debut here this year, 2022, Cynthia Corporate Gallery here at the gorgeous Somerset House. And we're going to be delighted to have a shortened conversation with artist, queen of British pop, Deborah Asapati. And I'm so delighted that I can introduce the wonderful Deborah Asapati making her debut here at the London Original Print Fair. And we're going to have a very brief in conversation today. Here you see, as a party. Here we're, we're right now, we're in front of Queen 2022, which Deborah did especially at the request of myself, Cynthia Corbett, and the London Original Print Fair to honor and commemorate Queen Elizabeth's incredible Platinum Jubilee. And we're going to talk about many different things, Deborah, on your, on your artistic journey. And, and I'd like to start with talking about your professional silkscreen printing process and, and, and the collaborations you have with the various printers you've worked with. Maybe you could give us a little context about that so sweet process. So I have worked with uh, Jealous and this one was actually completed by Lynn Blackburn from Hippo Screen Prints and she's done a superb job. The collaboration is excellent. You have to have a huge amount of trust in what they're doing and their performance, their abilities and no artist ever does anything about it. You know, my paints are made by somebody else, my brushes are made by somebody else and I'm not a screen printer. I'm the artist, but the screen prints is Lynn's done an amazing job on this. So can I interrupt? Uh, because I'm not very technical. I'm a gallerist, and, you know, with an art historical background. But for example, when you were, when you were working on this um, project, you were doing a painting of Her Majesty, of the Queen, and then um, then the then the evolution is is going from. A painting to uh, a silk screen. How does that process work um, with you as an artist? So I always knew that I was going to silk screen print this and so I was painting it within mind of what it would be like when it was going to be silk screened. So the, the application that you give to it as an artist and when you're painting it, you're thinking, fine, okay, I'm going to put diamond dust here, I'm going to put platinum there or silver here. So that was always a consideration. Because it's different. Because when you're doing an original painting, you're not applying silver, silver, silver diamond dust, silver leaf, blah, blah, blah. No, you're, you're painting with paint. I'm, I'm painting with paint. But as you say, quite rightly, this comes from an original painting that's been hand painted and that I then give to the silkscreen printer that I gave to Lynn Blackburn to then produce as a silkscreen print with all of its embellishments. So let me ask you another question because obviously I'm, I, don't, I don't understand what that means. Like in, in other words, it's almost like you're giving your child over you're, you're to, to right. these other people yeah. and you're entrusting them. And well, you have to look at the work they've done, their background. Lynn is uh, magnificently creative and artistic in her own right, in her own way. She produces her own thing, so I knew that she could handle me. That wasn't a problem. Uh, we had a very, very tight time frame because how wonderful for any artist to have a solo exhibition in Somerset House at this London Original Print Fair. That's wonderful. And Lynn was able to complete it in time. Another question I have, um, another one of your fortes, or, or started as a forte of yours, was embellishing the artwork. And of course you're working with special, um, uh, the special silk screen printmakers for this, whether it's gold leaf or platinum or silver or diamond dust or ruby rhinestones, gold ink. However, in the early days of when you started, your very first silk screen print, which is actually here, called Unplanned, done in 1991, I believe you hand embellished this yourself. Well, I like to do it myself, but isn't it amazing this is called Unplanned because it really was unplanned. So the hand embellishment part is here, it's just some people in the eye, but because how it's screen printed was just black and white. But in fact you can make people of an eye any colour. 
but I think that if an artist is hand embellishing something, it adds a bit of luxury, a bit of um, and, and it does add value because it is from your hand. And but this, as you say, was your very first silk screen print, and it has, to me, it has a slightly more animation, uh, fantasy feel. I wonder if that had anything to do with your evolution from having been a licensee with Disney. You know, maybe it did, I don't know, but it, this was really about trial running what would screen printing look like in my work, and what I liked was clean lines, it's very precise and very exact. I mean, I may not even paint like this anymore, I don't more details the flicks of the hair, and uh, absolutely more detail around the eye, but it was just to see if it did work. So this is actually on card. It's, it's on card. It's on paper. Uh -huh. So it, it, I don't think that it was something that I ever thought would be part of the beginning of the collection. Here we are 30 years later, and the pupil has been hand embellished, and it's probably the story of my life. This is not the way I've it. In fact, that's <laughs> probably the story of the whole room. I think it's the story it's of a lot of us from now, from 2019 yeah. to 2022. Yeah. Well, we are going to look now at shoe. The bespoke works we are debuting here at the London Original Print Fair in 2022. We are debuting, debuting shoe and queen. Both of these have gorgeous hand embellishment. Shoe is the artist's interpretation of the coronation shoe that Queen Elizabeth wore that was designed by Roger Vivier um, in, uh, for her coronation in 1953. To me, the shoe looks a bit like a Cinderella shoe presented to her by Prince Charming. But the narrative, Deborah, is much deeper for both the shoe and Queen. Could you take us through the inspiration of, of the two... Could you take us through the inspiration of the two bespoke limited edition silkscreen print series celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and what makes them so special? So this just seemed to work with me purely because it's my interpretation of the shoe that the Queen wore in her coronation and it's an aluminium background um, with a gold leaf shoe and resin ruby resin um, cuts, ruby resin, d d on top, to um, just enhance the shoe because that's actually what the Queen wore and stood in for three hours with the fleur de lil pattern at the top. So the idea of the cushion was, a, a shoe is just a shoe, lots of people like all, sorry, <laughs> different kinds of shoes, and the idea is this is Prince Charming in a way with his... Um, cushion, but it's the royal cushion, and there's the monogram. Of the, the monogram queen. is there, absolutely, okay. and it's as if he's handing it, but there's no hand to Cinderella and her glass slipper. But so it, again, again, we have some links to your past life, don't we? But I, I wasn't totally aware that I was doing it. But what I was more of aware was how do you make a shoe look as if it has a base and has a sole without making it look like it's floating. Mm -hmm. Lots of artists okay. shoes are floating or a collection of shoes or shoes on the shelf. But this is a very special shoe. Mm -hmm. This would be the, the shoes of grounding. She stood in it for over three hours. And, and supposedly, and supposedly, I mean, she was young, she was gorgeous, she was at the height of fashion, but supposedly it was comfortable. What do we, do we believe that Roger Olivier Really? I'm going to believe it's comfortable, but she was 25, we put up with anything when we're 25, that's the, that's the beauty. But it, 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 it's just, that was just the start, mm. it's so impressive, really. Yes. So then we move to, let's, let's, let's talk about, um, we were talking in front of this earlier, but walk us through the uh, Queen silkscreen print. It's edition of seven. I should have said she was edition of only five with one artist proof. However, there's a big significance for Queen because it's an edition of seven representing the seven decades of her reign. And may I point out, and you will, you will explain to us, there is silver leaf, and she has a silver jubilee. There is diamond dust. And she had a diamond jubilee. And now dust. there is platinum. Uh, so the platinum is here platinum the base. dust. Yes. And, well, no, you're going to talk about that. But in other words, all three of those precious metals are here representing 
her various jubilees, but talk about how you came up with that idea. So, um, the idea really is that this is a combination of all different uh, photographs and things that we've all seen in the press that I've pieced together like a montage to give her the image that I wanted or wanted to interpret. So, I, I want, she's a really beautiful woman, she still is. I wanted to express her femininity and um, I wanted to make her move. It's very, I, I like paintings that move anyway. I don't want a painting ever to sit still. And to me, the glitter behind with all of the embellishments that I was hoping would make her move, thank goodness, with Hippo's help, it has done. And um, that, that, so that it moves and shows her femininity, it's very interesting. We were talking about focus on the female, well, surely this is the biggest focus on the female. Yes, we, we, we talk about focus on the female. You were part of that amazing um, program that we did yeah. in, in, in 2021, and you won uh, one of the uh, uh, Focus on the Female Awards. And I guess we are looking at the an icon for, of femininity, for of the biggest icon. For everything, and her 70 years of service to us. Yes, it's and the fantastic. longest reigning, the longest um, reigning, monarch, and it's so yeah. beautiful. And and we have we have been very fortunate because it, it's already going into two very important collections. One um, a British collector, one uh, an international collector who has a foundation. Who knows where the rest will end up? But um, uh, she's she's great. We love her. And now we're going to move um, to probably one of my absolute favorite works of. Um, of Deborah, I have to say, um, uh, this is a this is um, a commemoration, another co commemoration, but to someone that has passed away. It's a commemorate commemoration of the great artist Amy Winehouse, and the title of this piece is called um, "Is Love Is the Answer." And Deborah, you're going to uh, hopefully elucidate us with some of the the journey on this because. My involvement with you was we were approached by the Amy Winehouse Foundation and the wonderful family to create um, a commemoration to yes. a wonderful daughter. And um, your wonderful daughter and she coincidentally were at middle school together. That was just pure coincidence. Um, I had seen Amy in school plays but when she was much younger. Um, so th there was a lot of homework done on this. It didn't just happen and I know it's not identical to Amy, but I, I feel that it captures her emotion and the emotion of what her family felt after many, many, many conversations. And really, it's just, um, close your eyes, take stock. I think she had a huge amount of love in her, and there was a, a huge amount of love in the family. Um, and it's really very tragic, but the ultimate thing is that love is the answer. And it just seems to suit, it seemed, the, the wording seemed to suit her, it seemed to absolutely suit the family. I signed this, uh, Janice Winehouse, and Mitch Winehouse has also signed this. And it was very poignant, wasn't it? Because it was dark, um, it was done at Jealous and it was properly documented. So Jealous screen printed this, um, they took a huge amount of care. You can see them in the rose, which really I thought was a trademark, that there's actually two tones of the way the the darker red and the lighter red. Like a real rose and, would be. And also, if you can look closely, I don't even see, but the, the, this again was an original painting. This comes from the original painting. Every single fine line in its detail has been picked up. That's not an easy thing to do. Everyone thinks that everything's easy, but it's not. Yeah, and jealous is amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And it's the icon of the pop star in the icon of the shush. So the shush, which we have... Um, we, which has sold... Um, which has been published, which has been um, very popular, yeah. and and sold oh. millions of copies through uh, posters and postcards. So and I felt that it was only fitting that, and and also my daughter, my daughter, and similar to my house same age. also helped. They they have the same kind of frame to um, be my muse for this. Yes, and your and your daughter has posed for you um, before well, as well. Well, she was and, the muse for sure. Yes. And she was so, the muse for sure. Yeah. And then we and here we also have um, platinum, platinum um, in in the earrings and. Um, we this is an edition of 15. We have we have we have sold 
um, this uh, in, within the series it's been sold all, over, uh, all around the world and money has been raised for the incredible work of the Winehouse Foundation and also the first edition was sold to benefit the British Friends of the Art Museums of Israel, the FAMI, which both Deborah and I are very supportive of. Um, they've been very supportive of you, Deborah, and your work. Um, so I'll just I'll add to this that Janice, Amy's mother, told me that Amy loved large gold hoop earrings, but in fact, I used platinum because she was precious, she was special. And also I felt the gold would have clashed a little bit it with the yellow. So it was more yeah. of a compliment, but as long as everybody's happy. Yes. I, this, is a, this is another, uh, like a question that, again, I think people, in the, people that follow you would be interested in. About choosing your titles, Besides the fact that you, that we would love to know how you create your work and why you work with certain muses and models, also your titles are really, really punchy. How do you come up with, say, turn here, save the date? Well, he loves me, he loves me not. The Great Escape, Monday morning. Um, the, the real answer is, I don't know, I guess it's part of my personality, I don't know, but I almost know the title before I've finished it, before I've started it. So when I'm compiling my ideas and my thoughts, it, it, it's a kick, isn't it? It's a bit of humour, it's something that you're thinking, oh yes, I can do this, it can make it work, it's, I, it can start off quirky. So I'm actually thinking of the title the whole way through, from the beginning of the process to the end. And then you can think it, you can think it, think it over, and then you go, yes, that's the one. But, but you've already been living with it. I mean, the original of that took over three months. So you've been living with the title and the image for a very long time. Then they're not starting But, but, you, but what's interesting, as, a, as, a, as an artist, it's almost like there's a literary angle here. Because you're creating, besides creating an artwork, you're creating a narrative, you're creating a fantasy, you're creating a story. And when you, when you title it like that, there's, there's the imagination then of the viewer, of the, uh, the collector, uh, the, the punter, whoever is, is looking at this, the audience. The, for Monday morning, for instance, uh, what, what's happening here? Is, it just, is she just coming out of the shower? And this very going? kind muse. <laughs> um, who modelled for me um, was just coming out of the shower and I said, stay there, do this, do this, be like that. She is just beautiful, but I think it was more to do with the stillness of the image and that's what I saw, so I called it Monday morning. I don't think it was a Monday morning and this is actually my daughter, but um, it, it, there was something still and quiet and relaxing and fresh about it. it that's so just it's almost, it's just almost like the, the viewer can you create their own fantasy. You can speculate. And, and Great Escape, um, I have to say that the last, uh, the, the last edition we, we've sold of this, there's two left, is edition of 15. Um, it, was, it was fantastic because I was, I was exhibiting this work at the at Art Miami in December, and this woman who had been coming back and forth in the stand, back and forth, a woman I'd say late 30s, early 40s, finally just arrived and said, "Yeah, this is mine." And I said, "Oh, okay. Well, well do you want to chat about it?" And she said, "No, no, it's mine. It's mine. Um, do you want to know why?" And I said, "Of course." And she said, "I run, I run a winery in upstate oh, California." So obviously, this she said we mainly do red. So that's why I kept running back and forth red red wine. Um, she said, but I I, I couldn't. I, I have to have it, oh, even though so it's, nice. it's a white wine glass. So how cool is that? So this is going to be in a winery in that's California. Lovely. That's lovely. And and this has a special resonance for me. And maybe you can talk about this in a minute. This is he loves me, loves me not. The muse here is. Actually, my daughter, when she was, I think, so just awesome. starting yeah. out at Juilliard, she was um, gone to Juilliard to train as an actress. So this is quite a long time ago. You've actually got all different years of my life. It's quite incredible. And there's more, but 
So this was to, this was created in 2011, um, and it's like when you're blowing a dandelion, you know, blow it once, blow it twice. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. It's the secrecy. What is she thinking? What are we thinking? And it's as simple as that. But it's quite a. Um, it's an early screen print, and I think this is the last one. Uh, yes, yeah, this twelve by twelve. Top. Yes, yeah. I, yes. I, I love it. I love the influence of black, gold, and red. And also, she's wearing a veil. And was it wasn't you partly were inspired by the fact that you were seeing you saw Carmela's. Um, Showcase. Well, she had and she was in the, and she was doing well, something for the forties. Yes. For her showcase. Yes. And, um, there's something very secretive and very special in there about the veil. When these little black bits are velvet, that's why they're sort of interrupted as if they're smudging. But they're actually velvet. Um, I don't know. It's lovely. It's special. And the final question relates to your, your Britishness, your being British. How does being British influence your work? Especially the two bespoke limited edition silkscreen print series celebrating the, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Because you yourself were dubbed by the esteemed art critic Esther Lovett, the Queen of British Pop Art. Can you talk a little bit about your Britishness? That's tricky, but what I can say is I feel very privileged. I have been alive in her reign. I saw her silver jubilee, her gold jubilee, the diamond jubilee, and now the platinum jubilee. That's 70 years of her reign in my lifetime. The privileged painter now at this time after a nearly a 40 year career is amazing. That's 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 just a privilege. And to do something I love. I love painting. That's really quite something. So I think that I've covered her her jubilees and her celebrations within my life. That's, and that's, also that's at, quite and also at such a historic place such a historic and I'm, such a historic time. Yes. And when I was walking here this morning and I'm come I'm walking through the mall with all the flags and I'm thinking uh, Actually, I thought you might ask me that question. I was thinking, I've done all of her celebrations, and I thought, wow, and here I am, and I've done the Platinum Jubilee. That's quite incredible. That's really special. The first one, I think, I was 16. Now, here I am at this age in Somerset House with her Platinum. I think that's, well, well, that's the only we can, we can We can hope that someone from the collection uh, approaches us, or we oh. never know, we may have to make a gift, yes, at, at some point <laughs> to the World Collection, but thank you so much, um, Deborah, for this fabulous so in conversation um, on in May 2022. Thank you so much, and, um, and thank you, Christina. Thank you so much, thank you.